Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and I want to talk today about PSA testing and I have some really interesting information to share with you and it comes from none other than Richard Ablin, PhD, who is the discoverer of the prostate specific antigen or PSA and he discovered it back in 1970. Um, he was working with some urologists, they were trying to find a marker for prostate cancer and so I'll just tell you a little bit about um, his research and then what happened where his research and his findings got completely misconstrued and misinterpreted and it's resulted in a lot of disaster for a lot of guys. Ablin is the co-author of a new book called The Great Prostate Hoax. I'm going to get it and read it and probably do some advanced study classes on it because I'm sure it's fascinating based on what I'm going to tell you here. In a recent interview with Dr. Eric Topol, he explains the risks associated with PSA testing. Now remember, this is the guy who discovered PSA and how his research has been distorted and misused. And so I'm going to share just a few highlights with the interview. It was kind of long, but I've summarized some things that I think you would find interesting. Alvin's background is in immunology, and he started doing some research with a couple of urologists on an alternative for prostate cancer uh, treatment called cryosurgery. And what they were doing, they started with animals. They were freezing the prostates of these animals. And um, it was very similar. The response was similar to like giving them a vaccine. And then they tried it on human patients, and patients who had their prostates frozen experienced remission of metastases at different sites. And so in the midst of all this, he and his colleagues were trying to find a marker for uh, can a cancer-specific antigen or a marker for prostate cancer. And this is how PSA was discovered, but the part of all this that becomes very important is that um, PSA was found not only in malignant tumors, but in benign tumors. So he determined, and his research colleagues determined, that it could be useful to use PSA testing as a way to evaluate the risk of recurrence for a man who had had prostate cancer, received treatment, and was in remission. So on that basis, the FDA approved the PSA test in 1986 specifically for that purpose, to predict the risk of recurrence in a man who was in remission after treatment. It was not for the general public. Now, a company by the name of Hybritech was interested in developing a blockbuster drug to treat prostate cancer, and also a screening test for the general population. Eight years later, they got what they wanted. The FDA actually did approve the test for screening all men, all men age 50 and older. Hybritech was the only company authorized to market a test, but other companies started doing it. And actually, urologists had started using um, the test off-label even before it was approved for the general public during the eight-year period between initial approval for predicting the risk of recurrence and the general population. Pavlin says that the PSA should, test should never have been approved for the general public, and in fact, at an advisory committee meeting in 1993, many members opposed it. And here's the reason why. The false positive rate for PSA testing is 78%. Ablin says he obtained minutes of this committee, committee meeting through the Freedom of Information Act, and it was very well attended by folks like lobbyists and drug company executives and patient advocacy groups. And by the way, that's one of the things that drug companies and test and device makers do, is they form patient advocacy groups to show up and scream and holler saying, we want this, and it puts pressure on the FDA to approve. Uh, even the advocates acknowledge that the PSA test does not detect prostate cancer. It can only be a measure of risk. Havlin suggests that the only way a test that was so awful could get approved is industry influence and money. Not surprising for those of you who've been listening to me for a long time. Now, Dr. Topol asked uh, Dr. Havlin, not only how could this be approved, but how could it then be used for 20 years? And Ablin stated that fear-mongering and money drove the use of the useless test for two decades. September was declared Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, and five years before the use of the test was expanded, companies like Shearing Plow were spending millions of dollars promoting PSA screening in anticipation of the test being approved for the general public. Primary care doctors were told by drug and test makers that men would sue them if they didn't get a PSA test and subsequently were determined to have prostate cancer. And the saddest part is that most urologists are still heartily recommending the PSA test in spite of the fact that research shows that there's more harm than good that comes from using the test. Ablin says the whole thing has just been a public health disaster. Now, here's why it goes on. $3 billion a year is spent annually in PSA screening in healthy men. That's just the screening before we get to the treatment. 
In addition, there are billions of dollars more spent on tests, procedures, and drugs, particularly in response to the 78% false positive reading. We're spending all this money treating men who don't have cancer. Testing and treating prostate cancer has become a multi-billion dollar business. And just by way of example, the machine that does ro robotic prostatectomy costs $2 million, and there's not a single study that's ever been done on human beings for this machine. So I'll then summarize this by saying there are four major problems associated with the current use of the PSA test. It isn't cancer specific. There's no definitive value. In other words, a man can have a PSA test rating of 0.5 and have cancer, and a test rating of 11 and not have cancer. So it just doesn't tell you anything. And this is common with cancers of all types. You've heard me talk about it with mammography. Clinicians can't tell the difference between a clinically significant versus a latent harmless tumor. And the other thing is prostate cancer is an age-related disease. 65% of men between 60 and 69 years of age have it, but it's rarely aggressive, and we just don't have a test to tell us the difference between the aggressive and the non-aggressive cancers, and most men, frankly, will die with prostate cancer, but not of it. Ablin says there's really been no backlash since his book was published. He's been interviewed by several publications, but the medical community has remained silent. Topol asked Ablin if he thought this whole debacle was due to a misguided but well-intentioned effort to help men or an intentional effort to deceive. And Ablin said without hesitation he thinks it was all about the money. He says that there are a lot of very intelligent people in the medical field, none of whom have tried to refute what he has to say or the evidence he's presented about this. PSA testing and subsequent treatments, a multi-billion dollar business, and he says he's even had discussions with CEOs of biotech companies who said, and he used this quote, Dick, this is really interesting, but nobody's gonna be interested in your story. Too many people are making too much money to stop this. Ablin says that's why he wrote the book, so that the average man could get accurate information about this issue. So again, always trying to focus on getting the message out to the folks and to the consumers because it's your ability to just say no that will drive demand for stuff that doesn't work like this. Well, that's all for today as usual. Pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. And I'll be back to you again on Tuesday with more news.